in the beginning of this week's Torah portion, we're in chapter 25 in Genesis, Isaac, Yitzchak, has married Rivka, Rebecca, but Rivka is barren. And so the Torah tells us that Yitzchak prays to God opposite his wife, and God answers him, and Rivka conceives. Rashi explains that what's going on is that God answers him and not her because you can't compare his prayers to her prayers. Why? Because he is a tzaddik ben tzaddik, a righteous person who is the son of a righteous person. Whereas she is a tzaddikas bas rasha. She's a righteous person, but who's the daughter of a wicked person. Now that creates two questions. First of all, it flies in the face of many halachic decisors who tell us that the prayers of a person who is righteous but the offspring of a wicked person are actually better than the prayers of a tzaddik ben tzaddik, somebody who's righteous, the child of righteous, because the person who grows up in the wicked home and overcomes that is on a higher level than the person who cruises down easy street, comes out of a righteous home, and is also righteous. Second, what do you mean that God answered him and not her? Weren't they praying for the same thing? She was barren. They were both praying for children. She conceived. So wasn't God answering both of their prayers? So I once heard the following fascinating explanation. When the Torah tells us that Yitzchak was davening opposite his wife, it doesn't just mean that they were on opposite corners of the room. It means that they were actually praying for opposite things. They both knew that they were going to give birth to two sons, the twins of legend, one to save the world, and one to destroy it. They also knew that these two sons were going to be, as Newton would put it, equal and opposite. One was going to have great potential for good, and one was going to have great potential for evil. So Rivka, who grew up in an evil home, who knew what evil incarnate was like, said, I don't want to bring irretrievable, extraordinary evil into the world. So what was she praying for? a moderately righteous son. Equal and opposite would be a moderately wicked son. That's the most she could handle. And she figured that a moderately righteous son would be better than an extraordinarily righteous one who'd have to stare danger in the face when dealing with an extraordinarily wicked brother. But Yitzchak, who grew up in the home of Avraham, Abraham, and Sarah, Sarah, in a righteous home, who knew what extraordinary righteousness was like, said, God, I'm praying to you, I want the greatest, most righteous person possible. Give me the person with the most potential for greatness. Now I know that that means because of that equal and opposite prophecy, unfortunately I'm also going to get a son who has the greatest potential for evil, for wickedness. But I'm willing to suffer that because I know how important it is to have the greatest and most righteous person possible. And so God listens to him and gives him a Jacob, a Yaakov, who turns out to be someone who fulfills his full spiritual potential, becomes one of the greatest people to ever walk the face of the earth, but he also gives him an Esau, an irretrievably evil person. But Yitzchak ends up being right. His intuition is right, his prayers are answered, and Yaakov ends up, notwithstanding the fight, the lifelong fight against Esau, he prevails and he creates, through his 12 children, the Jewish people. The take-home for us, perhaps, is dare to dream big, dream great, no excuses. Don't settle for second best. Why try to be moderately righteous when you can go for the whole thing and try to be the best that you can be?